And there they go, they light up right here. These are the Twin Towers. As they fly right into them. And here they arrive in Manhattan. And you see the Twin Towers. Hey guys, enter the stars. And there's been a lot of talk about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, as well as transhumanism, the two really go hand in hand. How can that be, you might ask? Well, in order to house all of the intelligence necessary for an AI, there has to be a large amount of storage space and computing power. And so once they have achieved the ability to house an artificial intelligence with all the necessary storage space and computing power, then they believe that they'll also be able to store a human soul. And as soon as they are able to develop the interface for transferring your consciousness into the robot, then they will have achieved their goal. So artificial intelligence is the beta test. It is the, the testing range. It is the practice run to transhumanism. All of this is linked in together. Now, several years ago, I did a video decoding the film Artificial Intelligence. What you're going to see now are excerpts from that decode. And you'll see how everything that is being talked about now is falling right into place as it relates to the things that we were talking about then. How are these artificial intelligences gaining the ability to grow and to learn? Well, they're plugged into these mining facilities. There are several videos out now explaining these mining facilities. Basically, they have these whole facilities of computing power that are interacting with the artificial intelligence. In other words, the artificial intelligence is acting as a vampire and is sucking up all the resources of these facilities so that it can grow and evolve. You guys, this is scary stuff. The Bible says if God had not cut those days short, there would be no flesh left. Enjoy the decode of artificial intelligence from 2013. Take care and be safe, you guys. Enter the stars. Artificial intelligence released 74 days before 9-11 and a 47 story building 7 would fall on that day. Artificial intelligence AI alphanumerically is 1-9. 9-11 happened in the Hebrew year 5761. There's your 61 and 1-9. Haley Joe Osmond born April 10th 4-1. 14 was the halfway point to 9-11. 14 years in 1987. Haley Joe Osmond was born in 1988. Jude Law was 28 years old when this film released. 28 was the total number of, of years that the World Trade Center would stand. 28 years. Brendan Gleeson, born March 29th. The 88th day of the year. So several weeks into the experience of having this artificial boy. They decide to imprint. Which basically means that they will in fact take this boy as their own. And love him. And this is all about the deception you guys. But what I want you to notice is the infinity symbol. In the logo of the people that created this boy. This is the serpent. Locked in time. Locked in sign. They're artificial intelligence unit that's in their brain is shaped like a cube and there's a reason for it because the cube is time in here in this touching moment we get a description from the mother of how the towers would fall cirrus which is a cloud particle particle accelerator decibel sound hurricane which is the hurricane Aaron now, in revisiting this decode from 2013, I am now coming to the realization that when seen in reverse, these exact words, what you're looking at 
is the actual chain of events that led to the fall of the World Trade Center. As I've told you guys in previous videos that have now been taken down from by YouTube, I believe that Brookhaven, the particle accelerator, had something to do with the fall of the Twin Towers. Not that they were the only component in the fall of the towers, but they were part of the the chain of events that led to the fall of the towers. Now let's read these backwards. Tulip, that represents knowledge. Whenever we see a lotus flower, a flower open, that is the knowledge. The dolphin is sonar. They have sonar. They can communicate through sound. Then they harnessed the hurricane, Hurricane Aaron, sitting off the coast that nobody was talking about. The decibels then ensued. Socrates, again, knowledge, the particles disassociated, and then we were left with a serious cloud of dust. Now, we just completed a full documentary on the origins of the World Wide Web, and the next cube was the very first web server, 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. It is the black cube version of the New Jerusalem, which is 12,000 furlongs by 12,000 by 12,000. That is the holy cube. This is the black cube. These are the beginnings of the internet. And back in 2013, we were already talking about the whole goal of CERN being to basically amass a database of knowledge through the World Wide Web, through all of us feeding into the AI and its artificial intelligence and its ability to learn, evolve, and grow. And here in the film AI, we see the black cube, the same next cube that started the internet. It is in the pineal position of the robot. Christ said, the lamp, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is dark, your whole body will be full of darkness. And this, I believe he was talking about the pineal gland. Who rules your pineal? Is it Christ power driven or is it driven by the dark side? And here you see the black cube, which houses the artificial intelligence in the pineal position. So why would they use a cube to depict the artificial intelligence? Why a cube other than the fact that they were using it to depict time? And I'll tell you why. Because... The cube represents the love and bringing together the new world order into one tower. The combination of two cubes. This is ground zero. The cube combined into one freedom tower to show the love of the new world order and this film was all about what would you do for love an artificial boy and see they show us exactly what they're doing in this part the mother is reading pinocchio to the kids and she talks about making eight baskets and then 16. now why is eight and 16 important august 16th now what's so important about august 16th well, let's take a look August 16th, that date encodes the life and the birth of the World Trade Center. The birth, 1973, 37 backwards, and the life is 28 years. Now, the story was by Stanley Kubrick. And we know that Stanley Kubrick doesn't do anything by accident. So in this sequence, we see the boys eating spinach. When she goes to stop the boys from... Doing that, she hits an apple, and the apple rolls across the table. And that is no accident. The apple represents sin, biting the apple, the serpent. We recently found the big apple overlaying this map of New York and Manhattan Island. The stem is the red line and you see the outline of the apple.
and the green spinach has symbolism as well. Green, the serpent, the apple. See how it all fits together? Now, in this film, they like to use the play on words. So they call the robots Mecca. Listen. And this theme is repeated over and over again. But here, when you have eyes to see, you understand what that means. Mecca is also the Kaaba at Mecca. Okay, this is the Kaaba stone, the cube. But Mecca is also the World Trade Center. We've shown that as well. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that Flight 93 Memorial also points to Mecca. So here is the uh, Ground Zero, of course, which looks like Mecca. And here is uh, the Flight 93 Memorial. And there are studies out there showing that this memorial, in fact, aligns to Mecca. And here you see the two jet propellers, two airplanes, shot into the Mecca. And now that you know what Mecca means, you'll start to understand this whole scene. There's the Mecca. And they're locked in cubes. Cube cages. And that's the World Trade Center. There's the countdown. And they shoot the two planes into the World Trade Center. The Mecca. And that was Chris Rock, who also played in New Jack City, about New York. And they choose him as the robot to shoot into the cube. They put this robot onto a... It looks like a peace symbol, but really this is the cross. And remember, we talked all about what the cross means. That it is, in fact... An analogy of the World Trade Center. This is the life of Jesus Christ. What do you mean the life of Jesus Christ, Casey? What does that mean? Well, this was the World Trade Center ritual. Building 7 represented Christ. 7 is the God number. This building was 47 stories tall. And 47 is a peculiar number as well. It is the atomic number for silver which is how Jesus was betrayed with 30 pieces of silver. And of course, Silverstein owned the buildings. But it goes further because at the crucifixion of Christ, we had two thieves at either side. Those would be the Twin Towers, 110 stories each, which makes 220 total stories. And there is your analogy of the crucifixion of Christ and how the World Trade Center fell. Now, of course, there were other buildings that were destroyed during 9-11, but these were the pivotal buildings. And back to the script, but I mean, look at this dialogue. He tells the little girl, it's too smoky in here. She says, there's a boy in the cage. He's stuck in the cage. History repeats itself. It's the right of blood and electricity. When the opportunities avail themselves, they pick away at us, cutting away our numbers so they can maintain numerical superiority. So David is the boy, and he represents the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Now we understand. Listen to the monologue here about demolishing artificiality, demolishing Christ. This is the, the accusation, the accuser. And at the very opening of this film, the creator of David, says that God created us so that we would love him and that was his excuse for creating an android to love a family listen to the demolish statement which is what they did to the World Trade Center 74 days later like a boy to disarm us see how they try to imitate our emotions now Whatever performance this sim puts on, remember, we are only demolishing artificiality. In this scene, we see 
God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son so that we could have everlasting life. David was created to honor the memory of his father's son. This creator plays the God role in this film. They call humans organics. And here we see the true purpose of this, the deception of this film. That organics believe in things that they cannot see or hear. Listen. So what Satan attempts to do in this film is to bridge the gap between androids and mecha with organisms. And he tries to basically say that we are no different than mecha according to God's creation is the accusation that he makes in this film that God created us and that we are really not real either and that Satan can make a new world where he makes us all into robots and then we can do without wilt and not have to worry about morals and right or wrong because we'll all be machines and that is I believe the deception of this film and of course nothing could be further from the truth because God is love and he wants a universe of love and he will eradicate evil when the time comes but each of us have to, has to make a choice and we've seen evil we've seen what it can do to each other to to the world it, it wouldn't matter if you're a machine or not so in Satan's accusation in this film he reveals the correct way to look at this without even realizing it and because this is a film all about love love is depicted both ways a mother's love for a child as well as Jude Law who plays a robotic gigolo in this film destination Manhattan and they fly right into the Twin Towers watch And there they go, they light up right here. These are the Twin Towers. As they fly right into them. So in this retelling of the story Pinocchio, we get more dialogue here, where David consults Dr. No to try to find the Blue Fairy so that he can become a real boy. And here they talk about the end of the world. The end of the world where the lions weep. And this is Manhattan. The lions weep because the lion of the tribe of Judah weeps for this place called Manhattan. But for the fallen angels, this is where dreams are born. And they here call it the end of the world, Manhattan. And this is where David wants to go. To find the blue fairy so that he could become a real boy. And here they arrive in Manhattan. And you see the Twin Towers. Here we get the all-seeing eye symbology with David as the iris in God's image. And here they show him in the center of this lamp assembly, swinging in the iris of the eye as he meets his creator. Here we see the OX, and by now you guys are familiar with the OX, the Ouroboros. David comes to terms with the fact that he is just an android, and we remember the people that jumped off of the building on 9-11. And David also makes that choice to jump off of the building. Here we get the fish of Ipet Goat.
Jesus born in the age of Pisces of the two fish. The fisherman cast your net to the right side of the boat, and in his boat he caught a hundred and fifty-three fish. It's all right there. They showed the same thing in iPad code, except this is the Antichrist they're depicting here. And the fisher in black and white, the duality, the Antichrist. So David finds Coney Island under the ocean and the Blue Ferry. Now Haley Joe Osmond was 12 years old when this was filmed, but he celebrates his first birthday at the end of the movie with seven candles. Seven candles. Remember, Building 7 was 47 stories tall, and this film released 74 days before 9-11. Now this is interesting. On his cake, there were only 7 candles. But according to the movie poster, David is 11 years old and weighs 60 pounds. There's your 9-11 upside down, of course. He is 4 foot 6 inches tall. And we see... One, one, one. A, him, and another him. That's one, one, one. And of course, what that is, is 9-11 having 111 days left until the end of the year. 2,000 years pass as David stares at the blue fairy, who he believes can make him a boy. And then they show the top of the World Trade Center in the final moments as aliens revisit the planet earth over an ice age there you see the cube locked in time the cube spaceship indicating what would become of the world trade center they cut into the ice and they find david as they begin to excavate after 2,000 years and they end this movie talking about David's eyes being fixed long after his batteries had run out on the Blue Ferry. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ. He's the only way out of the cube. And now we know who the Blue Fairy really is. The Blue Fairy is artificial intelligence. 20 years it's been since Deep Blue. AI, a chess game, the name of a chess game that actually beat one of the top chess players 20 years ago IBM's deep blue computer stunned the world by becoming the first machine to beat a reigning world chess champion in a six game match what else is blue artificial intelligence it's also blue prism collaborates with Microsoft to deliver digital workface force capabilities to global enterprise clients this is also artificial intelligence now you know the truth. Take care and be safe, you guys.